Hey guys! Hello! Hello! Look, it's Diddy! <laughs> I realize that you were here Friday, but I feel like it's been such a long time since it's just been the it two is. of us, you, you know? know and, and when I came in this morning, I thought, wow, I wonder what everybody's been doing while I've been gone. And <laughs> I wasn't gone any longer than usual. Yeah, no, no, not so much, but he did almost die on Monday, so, but you're better. Oh, I did, yes, yeah. I came close. <laughs> He had a man cult. <laughs> it was touch and go there for a minute. <laughs> All righty. Well, I hope everybody had a lovely weekend. It has been beautiful here this week in the Ozarks. Supposedly, we're supposed to get some snow in the next few days, but I don't believe any of those shenanigans. It's not going to happen. I hope not. I, I guarantee it, Dolly. It's not going to happen. Yeah. All righty. Well, whenever I got back from Dallas a couple of weeks ago, or January, whatever time was, I don't know anymore. Ago. It's been like a month and a half, probably. Like forever. Um, I came home on a hexagon kick, of course. Who wouldn't? Um, and so I came home and drew Denny a really big hexagon with a bunch of tiny hexagons inside of it. And then I also found a whole bunch of bee pictures. Justin, get out of here. What are you doing? <laughs> Um, I found a bunch of bee pictures, and I gave it to Denny. Oh, and some butterflies for you to choose from. Mm -hmm. um, and he came up with this really awesome tooling pattern. Tony is working on getting it up on the chat so everybody can have it. But we just thought that this would be um, a fun thing to do this week because we know that you guys love to watch us tool. That's a, that's a thing that everybody loves. So Denny has already gotten pretty well started on this, as you can tell. But we still have about half of it left, three yep. bees and three flowers. Um, so we're just going to tool on this today and look at these cute little trading cards for practice that Denny did. Guys, practice with your trading cards. Yeah. If you have elements that you've never done before, do them, do small ones, and then if you like it, send one to us. Yeah. That's what I do. So we can every put time, on our wall of trading Every time cards. I do something, it's just for practice. You know? <laughs> That's right. It we is. We just are really. always practicing. So. All right. So I guess I'll start tooling. Okay. That is sounds that great. Right? Yeah, I think so. I forgot what I'm doing, though. Does SLC have B stamps for sale? I don't think we have a B stamp, do we? Not that I'm aware of. I don't think that we do. I concur with that because John, our beekeeper, our resident beekeeper in the shop. He's had some B stamps made because that's his little logo for his, he has a little homestead farm. Jess is so excited. It would be beautiful framed, which is exactly what we're going to do with it, Jess. We did. I do want to do someday a purse made out of a hexagon. Um, so it's, we'll, we'll have to work on that construction and, and some things. But for now, we're just going to make a pretty picture. Yes. We hope it's a pretty picture. It's, good. it's Denny, it's already beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. It's halfway there. Don't screw up the next half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stay strong. All right. I'm just going to start with this little flower. It's I've been more today, really careful when I'm doing small stuff because sometimes I get excited try to go too fast. Oh, do you? I love that you still get excited about leather work. I do. I, I love what I do. I seriously. If I couldn't do this, I, I'd just get fatter than I am and, <laughs> and die. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, you, didn't, you didn't love the construction that you tried for a few years? Oh, yeah. I, I like to build houses, too. That was a good job, but I didn't want to do that forever. Not for your whole life? No. I did that for about uh, 15 years, though. I built houses. That's a, that's a long time. Yeah. Yeah. My dad was a... He, was a, he developed land in Denver. And he, uh, he and I were kind of together on... He was also in real estate. And he would uh, buy a piece of ground and subdivide it, you know, put in streets and water lines and sewer and gas lines and everything start building and well yeah then i would i would build the houses oh wow yeah and he would sell them for me well that's handy <laughs> it worked out really well <laughs> then i moved to the western slope of colorado and built houses there for a while but the, the building boom kind of slacked off there 
and I went to work for an oil field company. And then I got laid off when they quit drilling for oil in, I think it was 1983. But, I mean, the oil boom just shut down. Hmm. And that's when I went to work at a saddle shop there in Grand Junction, Colorado. That's when you found the rest of your life. Yep, that's where I found the rest of my life. That is correct. <laughs> it was all downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Don said, can we explain the layout? So, Don, what we have here is we have a 12-inch hexagon from top to bottom, not from point to point, because I did that. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, no. It is 12 inches from point to point and not from top to bottom because I started with one of those and it was really quite large. And so I scaled it down a little bit. So we've got 12 inches from your your widest tip to tip and then whatever the equivalent is, you know, height-wise, however it works. I don't remember what it was. And then I believe I have three-inch hexagons inside of it that I have placed. So you've got half hexagons everywhere here where we couldn't make a full one. Um, Denny did a border. So you have, what is this, an eighth of an inch border? Yeah, it's a little, an eighth of an inch bead line. Yeah, yeah, so we've got an eighth of an inch border around all of the hexagon shapes, which I think I made him a really big old thick fat line on your pattern. Mm -hmm. um, so however that worked out. And then he just laid out his flowers around. We've got the butterfly in the middle. And then he was lazy and only used one B shape. Oh, I wasn't <laughs> I was just incompetent. How's that stuff? <laughs> I printed him out like four or five B shapes, guys. But this was That's fine. this came. I he's a hey, cute I B. I did try. Did two you try other ones? Yes. <laughs> this is the one. I just have to give him a hard time. You're. You should all be glad. You <laughs> this is yet. the one. And then is this a tool that we sell? Is this a Berry King? That's a Berry King. Okay. Yeah. So we've got and then little Berry King elongated hexagon. Yeah. So the honeycomb. I do like it also has that double line, which is really nice. Yeah. So that's what we got going on here. All right. All right. Denny is using all the tools. Anything that you need to do shared in floral, he's going to do. What What do you got right now? You're beveling right now. So what, what tool are we beveling with? Uh, this is a Berry King, but it's equivalent to, uh, if if you didn't want to spend a lot of money on a custom tool, it's equivalent to a, uh, what is it, a did B. Did you write it on your fancy no, paper? No, I didn't. I didn't. Is it a, it's a checkered, right? Yes, it's a checkered It's a checkered beveler. steep beveler. So that's what we're doing right now. Yeah. So this, the, the type of thing is just a picture, half of it done. And then half half of it where we started here. So it's just full size picture of what you have, so you can print it out and see what it's yep. done in the little shapes. I did it in Illustrator Heath. That's that was what I did. I I picked there's a there's like a polygon option option in in Illustrator, and I was like, I would like a six sided polygon. Thank you very much. And. <laughs> uh, and then I made it the size that I wanted, and then I was like, I would also like three-inch hexagons. Thank you. And then I just tiled those inside my 12-inch. And I made the lines really fat. Ask and you receive. Yeah. Did Chevy just follow us? What? No. That's a shout-out. Oh, okay. My own, my own way here. Oh, there we go. Let me stay on that camera so I can switch the camera lenses. The other one is more zoomy. Zoom, zoom. Yeah, Thank the, you, bevel Tom. the bevelers that we sell that are equivalent to these are a PB013 and a PB012. Hey, look at that. Um, Crystal, we do have cedars. We have several different ones. I don't have any in the room right now. Um, I wonder if I could text Justin to go grab me cedars. She was wondering about the different size of cedars that we have. Oh. Could you do that? I can do 
depends on my want to. Would you want to go do that for our good friend Crystal? Meh. Actually, we're yeah. kind of we're kind of short on cedars right now. I look for some. I think the Chinese New Year has this kind of it, beef. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a. They should be coming back to work soon for us to get some stuff. But all right, we got to stay on in in the shop, Denny. I'll get them. Say what? You, you have, to, have to stay in the shop because I'm in real close and I'm getting ready to go find well, my seating. If I leave the shop, I'm in trouble, right? Uh, you, you I'll keep I'll, me on track. I will. I figured. <laughs> <laughs> I'll enter on there later than on. Nobody knows we're on air. Uh, Striker, it's, we, you know, when you sell something or you work with something every day, it's just kind of information that you accumulate after a while. Uh, then you've left the shop. We could just maybe, okay. All right. Can I do that? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Okay. Dean, I did get your email, and so I started, I first started to check with my purchasing department. I sent them an email after you sent me that one to say, hey, what's going on with the um, Sierra oil tan? Do we have, because we also, we had somebody that just tried to put in a very large order for the Sienna oil tan, so I feel like we're probably in contact with the, uh, with the vendor for information about it, but we received everything else on our purchase order for that leather, um, Except for that. So I that's kind of the angle that I started working with it. And then um, I just haven't had a chance to run out front and see. I also, I did get it. And that's where I started. And I will follow up after the show and see what I can figure out. And then if I have a swatch of it around here somewhere, I'll see if I can uh, match up and see if there's something close. Mary. Am I still on camera or did I leave the building? Oh, you're good. Did I leave the building? <laughs> Did you already open that, Justin? Mm -hmm. I was going to say the shop might have quite a bit of extra from when they click swatch rings. Okay. So if you, there was, there was some you wanted to use, you might check with them because they might have some already. Just but, oh, okay. So I, I just was okay. No, you're good. Oh, uh, maybe a little bit more towards you. Perfect. Denny, I had an idea. Okay. What? How would you feel about making a pair of woolies? Woolies? Uh huh. I would do it. Cause, cause we we bought a couple. Um, we bought a pair when we were in Dallas, and I tried to sell them the other day on live shopping. It's not that I I don't think that I couldn't sell them. I had the bright idea. We've never made a pair of woolies. Yeah, we. And uh, that sounded like fun. Are they Angora? They are, and they're two toned gray. Over there in the oh, corner, nice. I see them. So they have yeah. like tipped in highlights. <laughs> oh yeah, highlights are definitely desirable. This is the only theory. Okay. Unless you want to use. Can you grab me my catalog? It's on top of the pillow. The SK uh, single bar grounder. Hey there, DB. Glad you can make it too. So, um, who was it? Crystal. I don't know if you have one of our catalogs. I know that's a touchy subject right now because we've been out of catalogs for a while and we haven't ordered them and it's a whole hoopla. But if you do have one of our catalogs, all of the stamping tools are shown true to size in the catalog. So it looks like I don't, mm, I don't know if right now if we have them in stock. 
but these are all the cedars that we have. Oop, May, that's good. And so it looks like this S8666. Woo! Uh, it's very. I can also switch the camera there if you'd like. So that one looks like the biggest one, the S866. Yeah, this is it right here. That guy. Oh, now it's real dark. This one. Yeah, so that's the biggest one that we have. Um, but if you do, if you do have the catalog, or I mean, on, if you go to our website, we have the PDF version, and I believe that you could probably print from the PDF version. So if you wanted to, you could print this page. And then as long as you print it true to size, you should get the true to size or very darn close to the tool size when you print it. Yeah, I'm not so sure that's, how these that's are, a solution for you. I'm not sure how these are linked, but the digital catalog is linked. So if you click, if you're able to click on something, it'll take you to the actual to the item. web page. So that, that's what I was, so this is 232, page 232 in the catalog is where our cedars are. If you go to the website, go to the PDF version of the catalog, go to page 232, you can print it or you can, I mean, you can just look at it on your screen, but you know, the size may not be accurate. Let's see here. Michael asked you, Denny, have you ever bothered a stylus with the spoon ends, making them paper thin since they are so thick when purchased? Oh, have you ever altered your stylus? Yes. I think I, all of his are. Yeah, just about <laughs> everything I own is altered, including my train of thought. Train of thought? <laughs> Yeah, if as long as this stays in the frame, I can get pretty close to his work. <laughs> Am I in the frame now? You are. You're doing awesome. Everybody's loving the shot that you're giving them. Who did? David Denny did those. Denny Denny did these. No, no, no. On the credit. The credit. On the credit cards. I think I think he's talking about this. Are you talking about these? Then he did this, if that's what you're talking about. I don't know what else you'd be talking about. Yeah, those are replicas of what I've got here. Eric, that's... that's yeah. It's the same single B. It is. Yeah, I, I did those practicing for these. Are there going to be new catalogs? Some would say, at some point... Listen, if you guys have ever tried to print 10,000 things at 300 plus pages, you let us know. Uh, so the catalogs that we got here, well, I think... The 340 total, something. The total batch of those went up two times the amount uh, from the previous year whenever we had it done. Yeah. Which went from like 30 to 60. Yeah. Stacy Price said out again, and we deleted like 100 pages, it went to... Like ninety. Yeah, so printing is not That's cheap right thousand, now. $90,000. Yeah, $90, um, so at the moment, we have our digital catalog. That's what we've got. Um, if we do release catalogs again, I'm just going to say it, th there's probably going to be a charge for them, like there used to be back in the day. Um, it's a very, it's a... Uh, Paper yeah. prices are insane. It's Any insane. tips for bar grounding? What's that? Practice. Any tips for bar grounding? Go on straight lines, fan, and... Yeah, fan. That's that's the only tip that I can give you. Don't... Don't go don't over just, your line. Don't just go helter-skelter. Uh, it's not an overlap tool. Yeah, you should try not to overlap, although you can't help but overlapping. But that's not desirable. Yeah. Clean, crisp, teeny baby dots. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Baby dots. I know, Eric, this does need to be a purse, and I would. One day we might have to do it again and make it, or maybe we'll just, I mean, we'll, we'll tool this, and then I would like to make a hexagon purse because I think that would be pretty stellar. That maybe was, we'll just we'll just do it not tooled. Or you, you know what is cheap? Tooled. Dean said not, he said nothing is cheap right now, but you know what's cheap right now, Dean? The price of these SLC live videos. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Come at a cost of your time to watch them. That's it.
Michael wants to know what you would charge to alter one if he purchased it. He needs a thin one for tooling wood grain and an eagle in leather. Well, Michael, I could do what I could do with it, but it might not be what you wanted in particular. Uh, uh, really, that's not my... That's not my profession. Because <laughs> <laughs> what I do a lot of times, I'll mess something up rather than, than help or you. Or you alter it. And he dabbles in the alterations. Back, you go back and use it, and you're like, nope, not quite right, and you alter it again. Yeah. All you need to do is get a grinder and a buffing wheel, and you can do it yourself. Could you do it with that little bench bench grinder thing that we have, the little uh, Craft yeah. Plus one? Uh -huh. Yeah. The little one that we used to have on the end of the table. Yeah. 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 Shoot, yes. I mean, heck yes. <laughs> Dean says, yeah. not really. These videos make him buy stuff. <laughs> um. Aw, shucks. Um, I, oh, he's ruined three trying to thin them down. Aha, uh -huh. so now you want me to ruin one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot a tool. What do you need? Well, I need my uh, center liner, but I'm going to use something else here. You gonna make it work? Yeah, it won't look exactly like the other ones, but it'll still work. I'm gonna go get. It. I need to fill up my water. I Let's got a it. bottle of water for oh, you right okay. here. <laughs> Pass it on over. <laughs> this will work just fine. I'm doing a Jim Linnell. He's <laughs> he says just use what you got. So, Jim, I hope you're proud. And if this doesn't look right, you know whose fault it is. <laughs> if you're not turn it off, watch later. <laughs> All right. Since you offered me your water, Denny, I turned on the, I turned on the thing so everybody could see. Oh, the picture in picture. <laughs> We're going to drink Denny's water because <laughs> Tony's weird. I was always joking, really. I might need some water. <laughs> well, I won't drink it all. Okay, good. Um, apparently, Denny, we just need to have you bring in all of the tools that you've altered, which would probably be most of them. And you Here's can, one right here. You can tell us how you did it. <laughs> Here's one right here. Just where, where you're tooling, Denny. That tastes pretty good for leather. Yeah. Did you make it shorter? No, I, made, I just made it thinner. Mm -hmm. See, this used to be a real... No, right here. Right, right here. Yeah. It used to be wide and thick. So I ground it down, and it, and it's fairly straight compared to it doesn't have a lot of arc to it. Mm -hmm. So I ground it down thinner. And that used to be a V seven one five. Yes, a V seven one five, and that's what I uh, I use in all my classes. That's yeah. that's what I have people get because that's yeah. fairly close to this. But if it was the V seven one five, if it was a tool I was going to use all the time. I would thin it down, even. You made it look like a 714 that's no longer made. Quite possibly. Now I'm going to use that seat. He's setting that flower center. Yeah. I'm going to do the other one. I'll use the small cedar in the middle. I think I just realized that you're, you symmetried your flowers here. Yeah, I tried to, tried to do every other one. <laughs> Mary would like you to tell us what tool you're using when you switch. Okay, this is a camouflage tool, and this is a Craft Japan. It is SK... C. SKC... 431. 431. SKC 431. Uh, basically, any small camouflage will work for this. Uh... 
that's the thing about all these tools, you guys. They don't have to be the exact number as long as they're approximately the same size and uh, same shape. Um, Beth, I, we don't have a list of tools. I mean, I guess Denny kind of has a list of tools that he's been using, but it's pretty much all the same tools that he would have used on any of your your advanced class, right? Right. Yeah, so the advanced class that we did a couple um, weeks ago or months ago, back in December, I think, when we were doing all the classes, if you look back at those, those, those are the tools that he's using. So... I guess for the B, it might be a little bit different. So when we get to the B, yeah, you know. I think that the only difference would be I used a, a modeling spoon on the B a lot and, gotcha. and a hair blade. And you got to get those hair blades out so you can give him all his texture that he needs. Yeah, because bees are very little critters. Oh, Heath, we could do that. I think we did that a while ago when Denny moved, but we could do it again, a little tour of your of your desk and your spot. Sure. I'm really glad that you like that Stingray Blue Rose. I thought it was pretty cool. We have some ostrich frames for everybody. Uh, live shopping tomorrow. Got quite a few of those. I've got eight different colors of ostrich frames at a really darn good price for ostrich leather. So um, they're left over from the boot industry. The boot maker clicked out all the parts that they could click out for their shoes. Um, and then they've got this frame left over, but it still has quite a bit of quill part. You've got the whole neck section um, and then still some of the, the center leather that might be smooth, but you could incorporate it into projects if you were if you were crafty. I not bring a mule's foot. Oh, You're gonna need a mule's foot. Oh, I did. <laughs> uh, oh, what tool we got there, Denny? This this is a P. U zero eight zero P U zero eight zero mules foot. But once again, any mule foot that fits the size of the, the thing that you're working on. Oh, Danny, there we go. <laughs> I'm a mess. <laughs> Uh, oh, did you answer Beth's question? Yes. Okay. What was the answer to the question? Um, it's just the tools that he used in his advanced tooling class. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to do some little decorative cuts on that. You know what would be good to do? Hmm. Put Denny's tooling flyer on the website so people can see it. So when he references it. Yeah, I thought we were going to do that. You know, do that. <laughs> Great at giving directions. I'm gonna have to teach you how to do some of this stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't want to know how to do it. I want. I just you need you to know how to do it. <laughs> I know how to do it. Uh... <laughs> I know exactly how to do it. <laughs> hey, Tatsuma nerds, it's been a minute. What What are you doing on YouTube anyway? Hello. Uh, Michael, we'll reopen it for you. It it auto closes, so sorry my close up lens is on the other camera now. It's the see saw see.
the PC died last year and you haven't replaced it yet, how do you live? How do I live? When I want you, I want to like personally, I can live without a PC in my in my personal life, but I yeah, it would be hard to do my job if I if I didn't have one. Okay. Are you ready for a B, Denny? Let's try a B. Let's do a B. Let's do it. Twelve years, good service though. Alrighty, guys, we're going to the B, which maybe we'll be a little bit more specific about since it's we've we've done flowers on flowers on flowers, but we've never done a, D, a, a B before. Yeah, I'm just gonna use I, I'm gonna do all these lines that I've got cut with a beveler, but then I'm gonna switch and use a modeling spoon for a lot of it. Okay, so if anybody didn't, if if you're new and it doesn't make sense to you, we've already swivel knife cut his outline. Yeah. So that part is done. So we're gonna start now with what tool? This is a PB013, I believe. The beveler. One three or one two. Thank you. Yeah, the thing about a beveler, you I always try to use the, the biggest one I can without leaving tracks behind it. When you get around a real tight curve, a lot of times you'll leave tracks, so you need to switch to a smaller beveler. Like right here, I'm just on the verge of needing to switch. But by golly, I made it. <laughs> then you're doing a lot of traveling. Oh, that's to what I do. Alrighty, so we're beveling the wings first because you're good because they are on the top of the bee, and the body is under the wings. What a beveler does is it creates a highlight. You're beveling, you're pushing material down. If you were carving wood, you'd be cutting this material out that I'm beveling down. Well, Consumender, I hope you're okay. I hope everything is all right. Hello, Sweden from Missouri. Okay. He tells he'll, he has to be right back, so if you could just stop until he gets back. Just stop. Dean, I'll still be here when you get back. <laughs> Still got two more flowers and two more bees to do after this. Don't worry. There will be duplicates of this information. Yes. It's all right, Cynthia. I got it. I read that in for you. I'm not even close, am I? <laughs> you are in the vicinity. Just not in the in in like the perfect spot. I beat up. I'm gonna go with that. I beat up on the K. Oh, you know what? We need your mind. Okay, let me see. Tiny, tiny. I'm doing little bee legs now, you guys. That's little baby gonna, bee legs. I'm gonna use a real small beveler. So same checkered, but just narrow, guys. So yeah. same steep checkered beveler but a narrow version, so let's. Now I have that song stuck in my head. Which song? Narrow Little Bee Legs? No, How Can I, I Live Without You? You found it all on your own. No, nope, gone too far. You've gone too far. Um, there you go. <laughs> shoot. <laughs> you need to put a camera on my forehead like a like a, <laughs> a headlamp. GoPro. 
Yeah. Well, we're gonna get you some Google Glass. What are those glasses? Oh, oh no. like like um. Oh, Tom Cruise and whatever that movie he's uh, done a million times. Mission, Mission Impossible glasses. <laughs> what if we did it where Denny could, in his Google glasses, he could also read the chat that was there? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Although then he, would, he wouldn't be able to see what he's doing. He would just have like a chat rolling across. You just have to look through it. Okay, now I'm going to switch to the modeling spoon. And this is just a real small one. And I have thinned this down a little bit. But like, like I said, I just used a buffing wheel and just ground a bunch of material off. Mm -hmm. Hello, through oil change. Hello, through oil change. Hello, through oil change. I need one. I wonder what it would be on that bead like right there. What are you using? The modeling spoon. Look at you. Um, some of it, if you even use like a. Hey, go to the top real like fast. A pro pedal. A pro pedal? Mm, no, never mind. Uh, Pro pedal's a little too drastic for what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Maybe where the where the head connects to the thorax. I don't know, is that, is that the right verbiage? I, I think so. I, I don't I don't know a ton of insect parts. Mary June would know all the insect parts because she likes to eat them. Go back to the other camera. Okay. Thank you. This is so I'm just sort of sketching its little fuzzy body in. Because their body's in, I'm not sure if they're actual segments, but I know they're... Three parts, they're yeah. Head, thorax, and abdomen. I was correct. Right now you're working on the, on the abdomen. I thought the abdomen would be underneath. It's... Well, you'd be wrong. <laughs> I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, Denny, oh, oh, no, no, no. There you go. Um, Steve was wondering if you have a favorite size of bar grounder, which I think you do, don't oh, you? Oh, uh, probably a size 40 okay. in a Berry King. You know, that's the thing, you guys. Every tool maker is, is probably going to size their tools a bit different than the other ones. So Got to be careful with that. Now, Did you I'm going to flatten its little wings out a little bit. Consummate, Tony, just Google that. Don't let what? him fool you. <laughs> what? <laughs> my computer broke. My, my PC's broke. I didn't Google it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let me get this little tiny cedar. A couple little tiny seeds here on the end of its little antenna. So, oil change had a question mm -hmm. came up in, in their stream the other day regarding 3D resin printed block. Would it work for leather embossing? And the and the answer is yes. Yeah, a lot of people. So, I believe that Gray Ghost Graphics. Um, well, they actually might laser out their Delrin stamps, but we've we've 3D printed some stamps here. You just have to clean them up a little bit depending on, you know, the quality of your printer. And there's certain types of resin that are better mm -hmm. for... Mixing. Yeah, you don't want all those lines yeah. that you can, that, that some printers leave. So you can smooth it all out. Um, but yeah, a lot of people will do that, especially like if you, if you're just looking for kind of a cheaper version of a custom stamp and it's not something you're going to be using a lot, but maybe it's a couple single-time purchase or a one-time project. Um, it can be cheaper than than getting a magnesium or a brass stamp made. Okay, now I'm going to use a hair blade. Kind of try and fuzz this little critter up a little bit. Put a stinger on your bee? No, that's on his abdomen and that's underneath. <laughs> <laughs> you got it tucked down. I noticed that none of your, your bees, though, had any pollen baskets. <laughs> that would be my fault. I didn't find any, any images with bees with pollen baskets. I mean, these bees are flying all around these flowers. Listen, right? listen, Denny only copies. That's you know, right. so he, that's, 
<laughs> if I can't plagiarize it, I don't do it. Uh, hello, tough, Omar. Using tough resin. You're not late, Omar. You're here before the end. Yeah, no problem, oil change. What do you stream? Oil change, what's your... What goes on in your stream? Your name does not convey an essence of leather to us, so we're curious. Well, maybe he just is a mechanic and does oil changes on his stream. I don't know. That'd be fun. Can we bring you our cars? <laughs> if you're close by. Look at, look at you just doing things with swivel knives. Yeah, just making a little texture on his little oh. body. Oh, I was going to let you go to the top one. Just put some nature in there. Now, let's go around him a little bit. Oh, uh, hang on. we got to find him again. I feel like we're very at an angle, Tony. Can we get taller? <laughs> I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. I wish I was a rabbit in a hat with the back and a six foot. One moment, please. Yeah, Conte, that, that is right. I mean, there is the ideal tool for each project, right? So the size 40 bar grinder set, like Denny said, you know, that's that's his go-to. That's what he likes, and it, it works for most things. Now, if you're doing maybe a really big project where you would like something that's larger, maybe your tooling isn't quite as minute, you might choose something that's a little bit larger so you can yeah. go faster if you decide to bar ground that. Or if you're, you know, doing, like, coin size engraving... <laughs> Yeah. Maybe, or truly, maybe, maybe you want to try some smaller sizes yeah. to get into those sections. Oil Change does metal castings from 3D prints. Ooh. Where in Facebook does one go to post a hashtag entries for SLC? Friends Springfield Leather Works. If you're not part of Friends Springfield Leather, you can make a public post on your own page. Is hashtag. Or you can just message us on Facebook or on Discord or on wherever you can message. Or on Instagram, you make a post and you can just in your post, you can do hashtag SLC. Instagram is a little bit harder for us to find, but we do check there. Um, but if you want to the best place, the best place has now become Discord to post it. Yes. Okay, I went. I went all the way around with this matting tool. It's a, can you read that? Mm -hmm. So our matting tool is an F899. So that was the guy that put in all the lines or the texture around the little body. And now we got our pebble backgrounder. Yeah, a PA005. And I think that there's a three and a four that are both smaller than the five. Whoa. <laughs> What was that? Tried to jump. <laughs> that feels hard to use. Uh, I wish my tooling was a little bit taller. <laughs> oh. Okay. Come back to us, Denny. Yeah, gotta go like this. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> Mary said Hanks, and then she retracted her message. Okay. <laughs> no. So, no more hanks. Oh, Oops. thanks. Well, yeah, you just get that little thing and then... <laughs> then you're going to have to hit your tool instead of your <laughs> well, hand. Well, you're going to have to photograph me wherever I am. <laughs> oh, know where you need to go and I'll move the camera. <laughs> or you need to... Oh, you're already yeah. done. Yeah, I'm oh, done. too now. late. Yeah, see, I don't need you now. <laughs> wow. Denny has learned to live without me. Well, I live. Okay, we're done with that B. Well, Steve, what what size did you go with? Did you did you make a decision, or did you just willy nilly it, or did you just not decide? Did you say this is this is too many options? I'm gonna wait. I'm actually really excited. So my husband and I, along with um, Brandon and Captain No Fun guys, Chad will be back. We'll be going to the Sheridan show this year. 
um, to do another Glow Forge demo and hang out. Um, I haven't been there in a few years and I'm excited to go back. It is just a lovely place to be in Sheridan, Wyoming. I think I could I could spend many weeks there, not just a couple days. <laughs> so. Uh, Garrett lives and so. He wants to know, if I make oh. some pulsers and nice sheets, what sewing machine would I save up for? I mean, if that's all that you're doing, I, I mean, I would probably go with like a class three because then you can go up weight in your thread where the class 20, I mean, the class 26 is really great. So this is my caveat. The class 26 is awesome. You can sew up to, a, is it 277 or is it 207? 207. 207. You can sew up to a 207 size thread in your class 26. It will go up to like a half an inch thick of material. So you, you have a lot of leeway there. Um, but, you know, your needle size is smaller and you can't have a really huge thread size. But, like, so if you wanted to do smaller things or if you maybe have a lot of delicate stitching that you do on your knife sheaths because you do inlays or because you're doing whatever and you have a bunch of thin layers that you would like to sew together um, before you put the whole thing together, then the 26 is probably going to be a little bit more versatile for you. But... Um, the class three is going to allow you to stitch with a thicker thread and have a little bit more bulky. And I mean, I know a lot of times my knife sheath will be up to an inch thick, depending on the style of the knife or how my assembly has come together. And, and that is why I hand sew everything because I don't trust the sewing machine because I just don't use it enough. Like I don't trust it because I don't use it and I'm not comfortable with it. Not because I can't do it or it's not going to work. So that's just my caveat that I'm going to throw out there. Um, Steve went with Barry Kings. You little bee legs. My wife got a bumper sticker for our camper says, give bees a chance. <laughs> Aww, that's cute. We really all should do our part for the bees, guys. Yeah. Without the bees, I mean, if you've never watched the bee movie, you should, because that's true. They, bees are us. Yeah. There's no bees, there's no us. Do you guys think you can do a half pint saddle kit like, the old, like Tandy did back in the 90s? Get them Heath, Heath, I own um, stitching ch chisels and an awl. I don't own a sewing machine. Oh, you've, you've gone too far. <laughs> I hear that all the time. We, those little bitty mini saddles, Denny, what did they call them? Was that like the, sh the sh it's sales a salesman, salesman sample? Sales sales salesman sample. I don't think they make them anymore. Well, I heard that there well, is a, a saddle tree company that w that does make those trees. I but, think they're in Kansas. But I just, that just word of mouth that I heard that by. So I, I don't know for sure. I feel like the year I was in Sheridan, there was a company there that had little ones. And we talked to them and didn't. Don't you have one? Rusty Rusty bought a tree. It was a rawhide covered tree, a regular replica tree, and it was beautiful. It still is. Mm -hmm. But he had me take the rawhide off and fill everything in smooth so we could get it someone to cast it for us in, in a polymer or plastic or something. But uh, nothing's ever come we up. We haven't done yet. that yet. So, But I've still got the tree. So many of the projects that are in works. Yeah. Uh, Councilman we Yes, to your to your question, I think Andrew uh, Grimbeard he might have had a contact because he was researching before he had left. Mm, gotcha. Hold on, you can leave him where he. Where he yeah, because I feel like having him over there is uh, difficult for him. <laughs> so those things are difficult for It's me. all difficult for me. Yeah. 
Well, Denny, I was actually, I was thinking about that lamp that you made years ago on retail out of the, mm, oh, that, uh, I'm going to call it the wrong word. because like tapadero. Tapadero. I always want to call it the bandolero, but that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Um, yeah, the tapadero lamp. And that you just built on your own. That wasn't a video, was it? Right. I, that would be, that would be a s- several yeah. sessions, but it would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Anybody like interested in making a tapadero lamp? <laughs> That's pretty cool. If you're not, would you be interested in watching a video on making a tapadero? Would you be interested in watching like ten hours of a video on making a tapadero <laughs> lamp? How do you get your stitching holes made with a thick leather for hand sewing? All right, guys, it is a process. Um, hand sewing is not fast. It is if you want to do it. Correctly. I mean, there's a lot of people, like a lot of knife makers that I know, they drill out their holes. I'm never going to recommend, I mean, if that's what you want to do because you don't do leather work and you just need to make a sheath for the knife that you made. You go where you need to go, Denny. I'll get you where I need. You know, drill your hole. That's not. Anyways, um, but ideally, so stitching chisels slash pricking irons, they are not meant to drive through layer upon layer of leather. The, I mean, the pricking iron... Hence the name. It's there to mark the holes for you to then use a single bladed awl and then drive through each one. So that's what I do. Typically, my like top layer of my sheath um, is usually not too thick. Usually I have, you know, maybe like up to 10 ounces on, on one side after I've got all my inlay and my, my lining or whatever, all that's done, I typically will have somewhere between 8 and 10 ounces per layer. So I will take that and I will use my stitching chisels and I will drive through my line. Um, sometimes I will go ahead and glue my welt on to that section too and I will just drive my chisels as far in as I can. Usually it's not going to go all the way through, but I'll get as far as I can. And then I'll glue the back on. Um, and then from there... It's one hole at a time with your awl, and you go all the way through, and you sew. And this is, if you watch Denny hand sew, that's what he does. He doesn't even, he might, do you mark them? Or yeah, I mark them. He marks them, yeah. yeah. So that's what an overstitcher is for. You know, you can mark your holes. That way you get the right distance for each hole. You know, overstitchers come in a bunch of different wheel sizes so that you can have as long or as short of a stitch as you want. You mark all your holes, and then you go through with an awl. Um, I know Carrie Schwartz has a couple of videos. Like, he is probably... Yeah, he's probably the premier hand stitcher. He, uh, Carrie Schwartz, he's a saddle maker in uh, Salmon, Idaho. And that man can hand sew. It's incredible to watch him. So if you go to his Instagram, he should have a couple of videos up there of him hand sewing. And you go through one stitch at a time with the awl. And then you sew. And then you go through the next one. And then you stitch it. And that's what you do. Hey, Dippy. Did we talk about wishing anybody a happy birthday today or anything like that? No, we don't need to do that. No? Mm -mm. No. Is this someone's birthday? Mm -mm. (laughs) Mm -mm. Happy birthday to you. Thanks, guys. I'm getting old. No. (laughs) We all are. (laughs) Anyway. I'll talk to you later about that. All right. That's, That's great. I look forward to it. (laughs) <laughs> Be glad you're how you are. <laughs> I've tried some stitching punches and I've hit the times on them my first project. Um, so then also, like, you want to have the right tool. So you need a poly mallet or a rawhide mallet, You like not a metal one. And then, um, you know, you want a poly cutting board. So you want your granite slab. Like, Aww. You want your granite slab and then a plastic poly cutting board and then your leather. So if your leather is thin enough that you can drive it all the way through, then that's you want that poly cutting board underneath. It's just safe to have it anyways, just in case you get through so you don't bend anything. Um, but typically, depending on how thick your leather is, you're not going to be able to go through the whole thing with your stitching chisel. That's just not what they're designed for. If you try that and then you try to pull it out you know, 20 ounces of leather, you're going to break your, your tongs. That's, plus it probably just won't go through because they're not that long. Yeah, a stitching chisel is not made to go through very thick leather. No. You found these bees, like pictures of artwork 
on Google or something to tell what you got these beads from for Denny? Yeah, I just Googled bee vector art, yeah. and I found some versions, and I gave them to them. I mean, if you want to find any, if you want to do something, you don't have it, just add in the word, like, bee line art. Yeah. Bee vector, and you should be able to find something that you can print out. I did find these. Did we already show them our Celtic bees? I think we already did. No, just kidding. I don't know. Did you? Did we? I don't know. Did you guys see the cool Celtic bees? I found these on the interwebs. This nice person drew it, and I copied it, and I printed it. I thought it would be a cool trading card that we could do one day because it's about the right size, and it's just neat. So I found this on the internet, I like it. and then I made it in a bunch of different sizes. You do know the last time we were doing the trading cards, we tried to give Denny something Celtic to do and not just I still have that. and stuff. I, I switch out my Celtic. <laughs> for this Celtic. For that Celtic. Okay. <laughs> All right. You would switch that out, huh? Yeah. What weight is the piece of leather that Denny is using? This is a six to seven ounce or maybe even a seven. I think it's a six to seven. It's plenty heavy enough where I can stamp as deep as I want to. Oh, a turkey tooling pattern. You could do that. You could do a little turkey trading card. Gobble, <laughs> gobble. I guess. Gobble, gobble. Gobble me up a pattern. I mean, Michael, the, like, just Google, like, line art turkeys. And you'll come up with some things. Um, let's see here. As far as awls, I really like an awl with a replaceable blade option. So any of our awls that have, you know, like a chuck that you open and close and can put blades in, because you're gonna you're gonna break the blade. Like I was sewing through a knife sheath uh, last year and it was an inch thick, totally broke off my blade. Hundred percent did that. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, my blade hardly went through the entire thickness of the knife sheath. So um, it's gonna happen. So I prefer. Plus, a lot of times with the fixed blade awls, um, they will pull out, especially if you're like. I'm just gonna wait till he's done here. <laughs> what? I'm just gonna wait till you're done. Okay. Um, well, as you say, especially um, if you are going through something really thick, uh, the fixed blade can pull out, and then you really it, it won't go back in well. Like it doesn't stay. You can try to glue it, but it's really not going to hold. So I prefer any sort of all that just is a replaceable blade option. I know for me, like, I had that, I, I kind of went through a phase. I bought the $10, you know, Osborne fixed all blade and it's going through a knife sheath. I used it, you know, just a couple times and that blade pulled out yeah. and I couldn't get it to stay. Another good thing about the replaceable all is you can put different size alls in. Exactly. Yeah. So you can match what you need. So that's what I would go with. I mean, we have a couple here. I bought mine from Crimson Hyde. He was a fancy little guy. He kind of looks like a, a pipe, like the handle's kind of fun on the blade and, I have to, you know, buy several other things when I buy from them because they're in Singapore, so I have to make shipping worth it when I need blades. But that was a decision that I made. I made that decision to that's you know, what I have to do. Um, but I really like my own, so. Yep, there again, if it's not sharp, it's not gonna help you much. Yeah. Consummate, I think we're just gonna frame this and put it on the wall, or maybe sell it, maybe. We'll hang it on the wall for a while until I decide. I thought we just make it a piece and make it a gut that make it like a little piece bag. That's what ounce of leather do you stick with for your knife sheets? It depends on what kind of knife sheets I'm making, if I'm lining it. Um, typically I have like a six to seven top and then like a two to three or a three to four ounce liner. I pretty much line all of my sheets. I don't like just raw leather on the inside because the raw leather can catch debris. And then if it catches, you know, metal shavings or just whatever, it'll scratch the knife. And all the knives that I work with are just like, don't touch them. So I just line everything. Anything blind is more finished than unlined. Yeah. It was a dagger, Dean. Sorry, hand engraving that you can't understand me. Sometimes I talk quickly. But, um... Here, I'll find a picture of it, Dean. I, I'm actually pretty proud of it. I think it was pretty cool. You can be heard but not understandable. You got to speak her language. Let's 
I think I also have a picture of when I broke the blade off. Hang on, let me, my screen is dirty. So that's my all with no blade because it's stuck in my leather. <laughs> so that was the edge of my sheath. It's a real stubby, dull all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the knife was like a half inch thick at the top where it came out of the, the blade. So it had to be a half inch on the inside. Uh, I usually just line them with the same, just with Herman Oak Veg. I just use Herman Oak for everything, whether it's the smooth black or brown, because I, I like to use their drum dyed um, collar leather in the smooth look. It just, you don't have to dye it. It's color fast. It works lovely. Like, you can still stamp it. It's just really nice leather. Um but I just line everything with Herman Oak. I just use, if I'm using natural, line it with natural. If I'm using black or brown, I just use the same thing. I've tried the suede before and I've, you know, tried other things. A lot of people you like to use like soft lambskin and then roll it over the top. I've done all those different styles, but um, I didn't like to have the rolled top edge and then my welt just sticking out, not lined or covered or not looking the same. I didn't, I didn't really like that look. And, uh, I just, I just like a good finished burnished edge, two layers of edge. B number three. Yes. The final B. It's the final countdown. Which is what I say to everybody in this room right before we go live. <laughs> Mary says those beads are going fast now. Ooh. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Tony's breathing on the camera. Well, I was trying to move the tripod without jiggling it everywhere, but then it turns out that I would rather... Oh, jeez. <laughs> everybody hold on. It's an earthquake in Missouri. My tripod don't jiggle, jiggle. It did. Oh. <laughs> Denny, do you know what Tandy called their little miniature saddles? Was it half pint or miniature? Or uh, I don't remember. All right. Kevin might know. I mean, he did run a Tandy store for 30 years. He also bought Well, I know they so. used to have one that was just, just minute size, like... Oh, three or four inches. Yeah, it was long. like a tiny horse, a uh, tiny saddle yeah. for a doll horses. Yeah. DB, you're you can you can email Kevin. Might know it's Kevin at SpringfieldLeather.com. So That's it looks like funny. there's a few different words, but both of them kind of go together: half pint roper mini saddle, or half pint saddle, or mini roper saddle. There's one there's a thing on Amazon that says Tandy Half Pint Roper Saddle Kit 44166-00. Um, Golson, I'd like the single aught harness needle. That's my favorite. Because it doesn't widen the hole very much and I just use, you know, like normal hand sewing thread and I'm pretty good with my eyeballs still, so I can get the thread through the needle eye pretty okay on my own. If you look at their library, there's a 4822 Roper saddle pattern. Created by George Hurst. Ooh. Lord Daniel <laughs> agrees with you. <laughs> That's fancy. I want to be a lord. <laughs> I call Tandy when you can get the better information right from Springfield Leather. 
I meant. Oh, um, okay. So, Gordon, I. What size do I? It's either a size three or four. So, I. Um, when I bought my stitching chisels, I, I also bought those from Crimson Hide. I bought a set of a, like a five chisel and then a two chisel set. And I matched the needle or like the blade size of the awl to the size of stitching chisel that I purchased. So that's, and I believe it's a size, it's like a size, a three millimeter or a 3.5 millimeter. I believe is what I, is what I went with. You want to match your awl and your thread. And your chisel size, if you're using your a chisel. chisel size, yeah, to this, well, to the size thread that you're using. That's the main right. thing you need to be aware of. Yeah. Because if you use a huge chisel with a small thread. It's going to look funny. Yeah. You're just going to have a big old hole around your each stitch. And if you use too small of an awl with a big thread, you're going to cry by the time you get done trying to get your thread through each hole. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be fun. And then also a stitching pony is going to like, you You just need one of those. Get, get yourself a stitching horse or... Can you put a saddle on a stitching pony? Do they make saddles for stitching ponies? No. Yeah. It's like a saddle on a bicycle. It's called a seat. Oh. <laughs> Some people call it a saddle. Jump up on that saddle there. Um, yeah, and that's just, I mean, it's going to make sewing a lot easier, especially because, you know, if you are hand sewing in the, I'm going to call it the correct way, um, you don't have any more hands to hold your project. And it's difficult to get like the same angle of the blade every time if your project is moving around, like Denny is moving all around. Um, so invest in a stitching horse of some sort or some sort of mechanism to hold your project while you sew so that every time you go through with your awl, you're going through with the same angle. You have you can have your needles in both hands, you know, like it, it just is going to make your life a lot easier. You could get a sewing partner. A sewing partner? No, people are <laughs> not reliable some, to be consistent. Hold no. it for you while you sew. <laughs> and then poke eye. them in the eye every time you go through. So watch try real close. Make sure I'm going through there real straight. Did you talk about having our, our little uh, training cards in the background? Since we missed it all. Um, well, Randy Randy noticed that his little card's peeking out behind Denny's shoulder here. We did. We put our trading cards. I got them. I spent Monday kind of organizing and cleaning up back here. I got got us a, a fun lamp over here. So I had a piece of fluorite. Not fluorite. Um, I have a piece of fluorite now. I had a zeolite rock back there, um, but I replaced it with a cool fluorite lamp uh, Monday. And then I organized all of our lovely trading cards. For those of you that don't know... Um, the last Friday of every month, we do trade, trading cards with Denny and Kevin. So if you would like to do your own trading card, send it in. We will send you one of theirs or send us two. I'll send you one of each. Um, and so we've got everybody organized. We've got Jim Linnells up here as the trading card king. He started this hoorah. Um, yeah, we've got everybody hanging out and showing their love. So I believe there was a couple people. I sent Cynthia out some trading cards with her with her rocks or with her leather with something. I, I sent you some, some trading cards and I with sent um, John Babineau some trading cards this week. Yeah, BC to SLC. I don't know what that means though. Uh, BC. Maybe buys. SLC. Well, Denny, how you doing? Because it's like twelve thirteen. Yeah, I think. Because <clears throat> you did, you did to, your bees. Yes, I, the bees are done, and one of the flowers is done. You want to go back to the overhead? I can't. Okay, thanks. So we got all of our bees you have can. knees. Uh, the bees <laughs> have knees. That's right. So got all that done. So we just have our two little flowers left. With Denny, will finish up, and then on Friday we will color this bad boy. Yeah. Denny's gonna try to make me do something. I feel like, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. 
Hold on to that but, feeling. Here, let's see. <laughs> Look at that. Ah, I love it. All your little bees doing their little things. We got our butterfly in the middle. Alrighty. Well, guys, I'm super excited about this. Um, we will be back on Friday to color it. And <gasps> is next week Nick? Tony, 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 Tony. Shoes. Shoes. Sneaker, sneaker kits next week. So we are finally super excited to have Chevy Guy, a.k.a. Nick. Um, we will be doing a stream along <laughs> with him. As well, he, he'll be doing the work. We'll be watching. Exactly, yeah. So we'll be watching Nick make shoes. So we're super excited about our guest appearance. He's a, he's a really awesome guy. He hangs out usually over on Twitch. And um, he's become a part of our online SLC family. So we're excited to have him on to make Tony some shoes. Should I bring my checker set and then we can just play each other in checkers while Nick leather crafts? Sure. Okay. Sure. That sounds great. <laughs> Let's hear anything else that we need to... Yeah, hit that like button. Like and subscribe. Yeah, like and subscribe. We, we, do getting, things that internet people do. We were getting close to 50,000, but then it just seemed to slow down. I think we're stuck somewhere around 47, 48,000. 48, oh wait. 48, Shame. oh wait. We're going to make a leather Shame. play button, a leather YouTube play button whenever we get there. Plus, we got a backpack to give away when that happens. Oh, there. yeah. Yeah, help us get to that 50,000 so we can give away that super awesome backpack that Clayton made last year. Look so. for the rules on the post. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And all of you live shoppers, Twitch live shopping tomorrow. We will be on Twitch. We will be streaming on Facebook just for people that forgot, but we will not be monitoring it, nor will we be taking bids on yeah. Facebook. So go make your Twitch accounts. We're going to have our lovely Tony Ward, who runs our stuff, do our download today. So if you could at all go on to springfulleather.com and update in your account information, your Twitch handle, exactly how it is on Twitch. A hunt, like We just need exactly what it is. We don't need the link to the Twitch. Don't copy the URL and paste it in there. We just need what your name is on Twitch in that box, exactly how it is, so that we can sync it up and then tomorrow will run easily for us because that is what we would like to transition to be, is easy yes. for us because yes. that's what matters. Um, <laughs> so everybody go do that. Help your friends if they need help over on the Twitch world. Um, that is where we will be live shopping it's going to be awesome and fantastic. We've been testing it out today. That feed is instant and beautiful, guys. It is lovely. Should be way faster. A lot more fun. Um, so, anyways, help everybody else with that. We will see you tomorrow on Twitch, and then we'll be back on Friday with this lovely fella to color our bees. And birthday girl. Bye.